Hi there, this is Mr. Bickford. Uh, this video is an explanation of how to do the inquiry lab that is on page 67. Uh, it's inquiry lab ratio and rate problems. You do not have to take these notes that I'm walking through. Uh, if you'd like to write them down separate, you sure can. I'm not going to say you can't. Um, but what most of you should be doing is just going to this page in your book, page 67, and I am going to be working through this page, show, walking you through what this page is asking, and also uh, hands-on activity number two on page 68. So the first question, uh, hands-on activity one, I'm reading right here uh, on page 67, you can follow along in your book. It says, Jill and Sammy are, are racing go-karts. Jill completed six laps in 12 minutes. If Sammy raced at the same rate, how many minutes did it take her to complete three laps? So what we know is that Jill completed six laps in 12 minutes. Uh, for this lab, it's very similar to a lab that we did before, where you've got a model, you've got a bar, and I'm gonna write uh, that you need to do the same three things that we worked on uh, in a previous lab. That is, I'd like you to identify the totals of the ratio, the model, and then also the equation. What equation are you using to solve the problem? So I'm gonna go back to what it tells me. Jill completed 12 laps or I'm sorry, six laps in 12 minutes. And my two totals are 12 minutes and six laps. I'm going to put 12 minutes just like this. And what that is telling you is that this whole bar right here represents 12 minutes. And in that 12 minutes, Jill completed six laps. So I'm going to divide up the bar into six laps, looking like this. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So those are the laps, okay? So this bar represents 12 minutes and it also represents six laps, okay? So I'm going to write down the three things that you should be focusing on for each problem. Again, it's the totals, okay, a model, how are you going to model the information, and also the equation. Right now, I've got the totals. In the first problem, Jill completed six laps in 12 minutes, here are my totals. 12 minutes, 6 laps. I get that right from the text, the ratio. The model I is this bar, and I divided it into 6 laps. So that part is the model. Okay, so the model is that part. And in your book, you can see that that's that the model is labeled. These are each one lap. One lap, another lap, another one, another one, another one, another one. Well, if we're trying to figure out how long it takes to do one lap, that equation would be this. 12 divided by 6. If you calculate that, you are going to get that it takes two minutes for each lap. The last step is we know we now know that it takes two minutes to do each lap uh, and if I go back to the text it says how many minutes did it take Sammy to complete three laps going at that same rate. So now what I would do is I know that it takes two minutes to do a lap, and so my next equation would be three, because Sammy only did three, three times two minutes, 
three laps is six minutes. Okay, so those two are the equation. Two equations that you would be using are right here. Again, this example is pretty simple. Probably a lot of you can do that in your head, but you're going to run into models in this lab that you can't do in your head. Okay, turn the page. I've basically walked through the sentences on page 67. Read them close, and I think you'll be able to follow from what we did on that, on this model uh, and the equations. Next, go to the next turn to the next page. We're going to look at hands-on activity two, and I'm going to read right from the text at the top. Hands-on activity two, you can follow along in your book on page 68, says there are 184 goldfish at a pet store. The goldfish are in four tanks, each with the same number of fish. Determine how many fish are in three tanks. So here is what we know, 184 goldfish. The goldfish are in four tanks. So in my model, I'm going to say that this bar, it represents 184 goldfish. That's one total. And it also represents four tanks. I'm going to divide the bar into four same sized pieces. There are my tanks, one, two, three, four. So again, Look at each problem, identify the totals, build a model from that situation, and what is the equation that you would use to solve it. So already I've got my totals, 184 fish, 4 tanks, those are my totals. From the ratio that's in the text, uh, I have a model. built a model. Okay, again, these are, they're not laps this time. Each one of these are a tank, so one tank. I could label the rest of these another tank, another one, another one. Next, the equation I'm going to use to try and figure out how many fish are in one tank. I am going to type in my calculator 184 divided by four tanks. That's equation number one. You type that into your calculator and you're going to come up with 46 fish in each tank. So in that tank, 46 fish. Well, the question said, how many are in three tanks? So now I figured out how many are in one tank, 46. The next thing I have to do is take that 46 in one tank and multiply it times three. That's going to tell me how many fish are in three tanks. Calculator that, and you are going to get that there is 138 fish in three tanks. So again, focus on what are the totals, read the, read the situation, what are the totals, build a model, that matches the totals and then write down the equations that you're typing in your calculator. Okay, and you should have uh, two, on most of these problems today, you should be having two equations, figuring out how many in one and then using that to figure out what is the solving what the question is asking you to find. I hope that helps. Remember, uh, check the work, my workbook in the front of the room often. Uh, and also another strategy, if you are stuck on a problem, don't stay stuck on that problem. Skip it, move on. I do think that hands-on activity three is a little trickier than the activities on page that start on the next page as well. Uh, hands-on activity three has two models because there's two different kids driving. Uh, if you read it close, I think you'll be able to do that one, but again, don't stay stuck on three, hands on activity three. If that one's making you confused, skip it, move on to the next page. Again, uh, check my workbook often, and of course, always ask for help. Until next time.